God knows you need a great lighting designer if you don't really have a set. Uh, so uh, Nick and I are finding various ways, which we started with, uh, you know, on bar we started exploring this. We're finding different, various different ways of completely transforming empty spaces, <laughs> uh, which, which is, is given that you've got nothing to transform the space if they're going to be empty, the two different versions of those empty spaces, uh, it, it's, it's a big, not just a big lighting uh, uh, problem that needs to have a great lighting solution, but it's also a, a kind of set um, engineering, I suppose, as much as, 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 as concept and it's very good at solving those problems. I, I just love lighting empty spaces. <laughs> They're because so much of theatre lighting is about filling a space with light. You're just filling it with an ephemeral medium rather than with something solid and four square. But you still got to fill the space. So in that respect, <clears throat> once you once you accept that premise that you're filling the space with a medium that is just as visible, then you have this fantastic flexibility where you can just change that space without having to have a scene change as such. So mm. Nick was the first person I shared um, f my discovery of this screenplay with. Um, I, I'd read it and that day or the next day I called Nick and, and emailed. I just, I needed to find someone else who would be able to be as in, lo who would be as in love with this script as, 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 as I was because it felt, it felt like a huge discovery. Um, uh, like like a, a tomb uh, from 5,000 years ago in the middle of a desert. Like it really felt, it felt like it was, unco it was uncovering the, the theatrical potential in something that, that people had, had, had been ignoring for a long time. Probably because the film wasn't massively successful uh, and not one of his better films. Uh, nobody had necessarily thought to go to the screenplay to see whether or not. And yet when you read the screenplay, it's just screaming to be turned into a piece of theatre. Mm. Just asking for it. Mm. It's, it's one of those things that after the event, you can't quite believe that nobody's had the idea before. Usually when you're, when you're solving the set design for a project, you're solving uh, how to make a single idea that runs through a production. Uh, identifying that idea and, and solving how to make it most present to the audience that you're, that you're um, presenting the work to. In this particular case, one of the most difficult challenges that we, that we um, lit upon uh, halfway through the, 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 the process of, of designing it was, was that we suddenly realised that um, that short of having a million and one incredibly realistic scene changes to represent all the different locations in the film, uh, the only solution to staging it was going to be very similar to how Dream is read on stage. Uh, and therefore, the fact that there's a second genre in in the screenplay and, and therefore the play, which is dreams, it was going to be impossible to tell the difference between those two realities. And, and it was of paramount importance, unlike some projects where it's great to not be able to tell what reality is and what reality isn't. It's of paramount importance to Jenny's story to be able to tell objectively when she's losing her mind and when she's not losing her mind because her journey is about discovering that she's suddenly losing her mind. And the audience can't discover that with her if they can't tell the difference between her, her, her grasp of reality and her lack of grasp of reality. And the problem being that the, the, so many of the, the ways in which we stage a change of location in the theatre normally is so akin to the film version of of communicating the fact to an audience that this this is it. you're now inside someone's head, whether it's a dream or their imagination. Or yeah. Whatever. That there's a there's a really big overlap in um, in theatrical in, language. In theatrical language there. 
And so we've, we've essentially found a solution which involves two different spaces. Once, as, as we were saying, you know, changing one empty space to another empty space and having the audience's subjective experience of those um, two spaces uh, be completely different. Completely different. Um, so that it might feel like two different productions at times, um, which you may not understand initially, but once you realise why it's happened and how that relates to the lead character's journey, I think it, it'll, um, yeah. it'll resolve itself quite well. I think it's not going to take anybody terribly long at all to <laughs> cotton on. No. But that won't mean that they, their bodies will have, have got used to the, di the change no. yet. 